Hi, I'm the Iron Tailor. I'm a costumer and steampunk maker. For the past four years, I've been sharing some of my projects through local classes and also through my blog, theirontailor.blogspot.com. There you'll find some detailed instructions and step-by-step -step pictures to walk you through the process of making these projects. I try to use a lot of recycled materials, very simple hand tools, and just basic skills. So these should be able to be done by pretty much anyone. What kind of projects am I making? Well, everything from goggles to metals to more complicated projects, things that light up, or maybe even a complete dive suit. Now, obviously this project's gonna take you a little longer than a single video, but it can be done with those same simple tools and basic skills. To try to spread the word a little bit more, I'm now starting a series of videos. So this is the first in what will hopefully be at least 300 videos, since that's how many projects are back on my blog, on how to make these various projects. Remember, if you ever get confused watching the video, you can always go to the blog, theirontailor.blogspot.com, and get those detailed instructions and detailed pictures. So, take a look at the video, and let's see what you can build. Okay, today's project is a belt-mounted holster to hold a cup and a saucer. And the reason we're doing this is tea dueling is a big thing in the Southwest. Everybody wants one of these, because you can bring out your own uh, teacup, and it just adds to the drama of it. I'd like to make it out of leather, and when I work in leather, I always start with craft foam. And that may sound a little silly, but the craft foam bends kind of the same way the leather does. If you're using thick leather, use thick foam. If you're using thin leather, use thin foam. Uh, what I'm going to do is take my uh, saucer, lay it on a piece of the foam, and cut it out, leaving a good inch all the way around. I'm leaving a square top across the top. And then the second set is going to be identical to that, except I'm going to make a little bit of a cutout uh, so that you can see the top of the saucer. Now, saucer may go in this way, it may go in that way. It won't matter a whole lot once you've cut these out, but this is also why you need that full inch. Because you can see that the back is quite a bit bigger than the front, but it ends up bending when I put it together, so that's why I need that extra little bit uh, of size in the back. Final piece is going to be to hold the teacup, so it's going to be identical to the middle, except I'm going to cut this slot in it, so the teacup is held by the lip, but the rest of it sticks out. Now that doesn't seem like it's going to be that secure, but I'm going to run a safety strap through the handle when I reach the end of it. So when you're doing this and you're mocking this up, you don't have to be real precise. Make it overly big, put it together, see how it fits. You can always trim a little bit off. You can make all the mistakes you want in craft foam and it costs you pennies. If you make a mistake in leather, it might cost you several dollars every time you make that mistake. So all I do is go around the outer edge. I'm going to line these up. And I got a stapler. And by doing this, I very quickly can put this together. Yet it's nice and secure, holds in place, and I can always take the staples out later. What it does is it gives me a nice, fast mock-up of the actual shapes so that I can see how the teacup is going to sit in it once it's done. Now you can picture this. This is just exactly where the stitching is going to go when I sew this together. If I'm using a real heavy leather, this is where I'll put the individual rivets. So that was incredibly low tech. In goes my saucer, and in goes my teacup. So that's going to be my basic pattern. 
So all I need to do now is go in there, take the staples out, and split these into three pieces so that I can put them on the leather. Okay, I've laid out my pattern pieces on some kind of medium weight leather. Um, this would be about the weight you'd get if you took a leather jacket apart. This is actually a very odd shaped piece I got as part of a bundle of scrap that when uh, real leather workers are working with a large hide, they'll cut around and they'll end up with these incredibly odd shapes that are worthless to them because they're making a fairly big piece. Fabulous for makers like us who are making smaller pieces. So I'm going to put these as densely as I can, I try not to waste any, and then out of the extra pieces here I'm going to do the straps that will go around the belt and then the safety strap that's going to go across the front of the um, goes across the front of the holster and, and goes through the handle of the teacup. So you'll see that when it's all put together. I'm using a couple of my favorite little binder clips just to pin the foam pattern onto the leather. It'll hold it in place, doesn't pierce the leather, makes it easy to cut as I go through. And I've lined up with an already flat edge, so I'm not going to waste any on that side at all. Okay, so I've got everything cut out. I just used regular scissors from the 99 cent store. These are a little heavier duty than just plain paper scissors, but not by much. So they'll cut through kind of medium leather like this pretty easily. You get into heavier leather, you're going to have to get a set of those um, paramedic shears that can cut through a penny. Those work great on that. Uh, heavier leather, to make long straight cuts like this, you may want to start using a uh, straight edge, metal straight edge, and a razor knife, but always make sure you've got a scrap piece of plywood to cut on because you're going to chew up whatever surface uh, you're working on using a uh, razor knife like that. And change your blades often. The sharp blade cuts so much easier than the dull blade. So at this point I can start actually putting it together. Uh, I'm going to do just sewing on my sewing machine for most of these. This is a little thicker than what I'm used to doing, so I'm going to try to keep it to no more than three layers, which means to make the belt loops, I'm going to fold them over. I'm going to put them behind just the back layer, set them in a little bit so I still can get to my seam, and I'll sew those separately. Once I've got those in place, then I'll stack up my middle and my front, and I'll sew that exterior and just across the top. Uh, if I need to, I'll go ahead and pop in and reinforce with some screw posts, but I don't think I'll need it on this case. So let me get working on that and I'll show you how it turns out. Okay, so my machine is sewing this at three layers thick, um, but I wanted you to see this because it's, it's interesting. I was originally doing it strictly by hand turning it and I found that it actually ran well um, on its own but yeah I wouldn't try to go any any thicker than three layers on this but it's turning out pretty well. Okay the sewing went pretty well. Uh, you'll notice that the edges didn't match up great and look kind of terrible. That's fine. When we're working from kind of a freehand foam piece like that line them up get it just about the way you'd like and then we'll go back now and we'll trim these when they're all put together. That'll give us a beautifully even edge all the way around. So that's a little trick that kind of saves us a lot of careful precision at the beginning. Comes out looking like we did it with a laser cutter. There we go. By cutting the edge, now we have a beautifully smooth edge all the way around. If you wanted to make it look really finished, you could go ahead with a hot glue gun actually glue the edges together. I'm not going to bother. Uh, it's one of those things you'd have to get right up close to see it, and I'm pretty happy with the way this turned out. The only thing I have to do now is put on the safety strap on the top. Okay, it's important to put your saucer and teacup into this when you're measuring the placement of the safety strap. Uh, because it, it surprised me, it actually kind of brings things in on the top. And so this is quite a bit shorter than I would have thought it has to be. So it's going to fit across pretty much like that. I'm going to go ahead and put a uh, screw post on one side and a snap on the other. 
Okay, setting snaps is pretty simple. I used my leather punch to put a hole in the end of my uh, strap, and it only has to be big enough to take the uh, stem of the top portion of the snap. So that pushes through, and then this is the top part of the snap that goes with that. Uh, my kit came with a little plastic piece to protect the back, and then a little piece that is going to spread out the center of that to make it like a rivet. I'm going to move my bone china cup and saucer before I start beating near it. Okay, it works better when you use the correct anvil. This is the actual punch that goes on to it. That little mushroom head rolls it over nicely. So I did the bottom, I did the top, and now the two pieces just snap together. Nice and stiff. The reason I do those is it's a lot easier to get this end pinned in place uh, than it is the snaps. So now I can line these up, punch it, and put in a screw post. Now this is why you try things. If I were to have eyeballed this without putting the uh, teacup and saucer in it, I would have said that that's way too short. You can see there's a good three quarters of an inch between those. But when I do load this, forces it to cup a lot more and it brings those edges in and you can see that that actually lines up just right now. So all I have to do there, I'm going to have the pretty plain side facing out, the slotted side facing in. For steampunk sometimes we'll put that slotted side facing out just to make it look a little more authentic. And I'm using a 3 8 instead of a quarter inch. I needed just a little bit more length on it. These actually come typically in quarter inch, 3 8 and up. Uh, in aluminum, I can actually get them in 1 8 which is very handy for working with some of the smaller stuff. So there we have it. That is our completed teacup holster. And uh, it's all ready to go. Now I rigged this one for right hand draw, so it's going to be over to the right and I'll open it from the front. If you're left-handed, you may just want to switch that. If you want to get fancy, put a snap on both ends, and that way you can open it either way you want. So I hope that you uh, decide you want to try a little tea dueling, and you can make a holster for yourself.